hey welcome back everyone to another video and in this one i'm talking about intel's um arm stuff because they did arm stuff back in the day and they were very they were fairly good at it they were fairly famous at it a lot of the people actually used uh their arm hardware and i'm not talking about their acquisition of uh altera i am talking about their actual arm chips that they actually made this particular device i was able to buy for very cheap locally uh, sadly this is going to be a short video i'm not going to be able to show you a lot of things i'll, I'll go into that later but what i'm talking about is our uh, intel's x scale now this was their uh, custom arm v5 based micro architecture so i'm not sure if it completely ran a hundred percent arm v5 compiled code or was it um because x scale is always uh, shown as a arm v5 micro architecture so um so I'm, I'm pretty sure it would run the isa uh code code compiled for the arm v5 isa just fine uh, there might have been some specialized stuff here and there but yeah so I mean you can still download their entire Xscale micro architecture developers manual from intel.com uh, the little bit of history of Xscale is that it was sold to Marvel uh, in the year 2006 uh, waiting for the wiki article to load but yep uh, so Intel sold the PXA family or their X scale family to uh, Marvel Technology Group in 2006. Uh, apart from that, um, yeah, so I, I guess they just sold the PXA family and there were others, uh, but PXA was one of the most prevalent um, X scale stuff. And we uh, in the board, I'm going to show you it has the lowest end uh, PXA255. Uh, so, in yeah. It was fine. Uh, there was some consumer electronic stuff they made, but they just then didn't do any more. So some phones had them, so Rim Blackberry had it uh, at one point. Uh, so some other PDAs, iPack, um, Sharp, Dell, bunch of stuff, and some early uh, Amazon Kindles as well. So. Uh, the IO processors I think are still used according to the wiki um, in some Z online platforms for maybe um, engine management or something like that. But apart from that, uh, yeah, um, that's that's the history. It's uh, they used to Intel used to manufacture ARM based socks a very 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 long time ago. So the one that we have in the board is the pxa255 which is the c200 version so intel x scale 32 kilobyte instruction cache very low by today's standard 32 kilobyte data cache again very low uh, by today's standard and then there was some 16 bit because the arm v5 spec didn't mention of hard float point uh, like hard floating point extension or anything like that that was in arm v7 uh, so yeah there was not much float point calculations being done uh, on the hardware so it was all on software and it was terribly slow um, so clock uh, from 100 to 400 megahertz doesn't even touch the 600 700 lineup uh, and uh, for the most part very very generic stuff um pcmci compact flash support sdram up to 100 megahertz doesn't say how much and i mean you can go ahead and take a look at this in detail if you want again the it's the pxa255 c200 variant so if you're interested in taking a look uh, at in in detail of this sock um you you can there's not too much interesting about it so um, i have this board right here on my desk so i can show that to you guys right there so i'll tell you and go into the uh, story of what this board actually is and um why this will be a short video so all right so this is something that people call 
uh, JAMA board. Uh, JAMA are, if you don't know, they are a type of arcade machines and also sort of this connector spec. So this connector basically goes to your coin slots, your buttons, your controls and stuff like that. Uh, you have separate joystick connector because the original JAMA spec never had joysticks. So you have connectors for those and these basically go into all of that slot uh, and what this card is is basically a big fat uh, emulator so you have your vg output for the display you have your audio out you have your power in which is the 12 volt uh, and 5 volt stuff right here and then you have MOS, uh, i think it's just a linear voltage regulator uh, and then a bunch of other uh, jelly bean logic here and there the one uh, one of the most interesting part is um, the X scale processor. Now this board was probably manufactured after Intel sold off uh, their their stuff to Marvel. So this one has a Marvel sock on it. So it does not have a genuine Intel sock, but older variants had a gen genuine Intel sock on there. So you can see the Marvel M logo there, um, and there is a Altera Max 2 CPLD here doing some uh, logic things where I can see traces going off through the VGA for some reason but I think VGA is still directly connected to this uh, and also controlling the IO so you have your level shifters here I think that's what those are I'm just guessing um, some more jelly bean logic stuff but uh, maybe also loading the firmware onto it uh, so surprisingly this thing has two um, NAN flashes so uh, just a couple megabytes NAN these are not big uh, NAN flash storage devices uh, and a single uh, SD RAM I'm guessing for the um, there's nothing else that will use SD RAM on it uh, so it's it's for the um, Marvel chip um, and yeah some traces are going off there somewhere not sure how it's all connected um, and this I'm sure the old um, Altera is some this there's, there's some um, SPI flash somewhere I think it's this one or this one um, that's feed that feeds into the Altera's um, bitstream and everything else now why I'm, what I'm confused about is the two very different um, NAND flashes here and what their purpose is I can see a lot of it is going to the max chip so there might be something to do with that and yeah I'm, I'm actually not sure what this is now the sad part is that the, the person who designed and created this died some time ago he passed away due to cancer and there's no way to contact him as far as I know, there are no schematics of this thing publicly available. Uh, there might only be design files available. There's no firmware uh, source available. Uh, there's no way to... Uh, I, I couldn't find a way to actually push firmware into it apart from these pins. And these pins are actually JTAG pins for the Altera Max too. So we might be able to uh, export... Um, export some FPGA bitstream out of it so there's some traces going on here and I did actually take a multimeter and then check each and every connection so these are JTAG for the Max 2 JP1 is a jumper pin I thought it was UART I was so hoping it to it be like a UART port but it isn't so this is just jumper for stuff um, and to, to change stuff I don't know maybe hopefully change like you know JTAG going into the main sock um, or something like that and we might be able to probe it that way but again I'm, I'm not sure what any of it this is so this is sort of also a cry for help so if anyone out there who's watching this knows where to find the schematics for this thing knows where to find the firmware for this thing knows how to load and download offload firmware from this thing I'd love to talk to you and if anyone's interested in hacking this uh, with me I would love that as well so um, yeah, I'm, I'm like this sock is supported upstream. I, I could write a Linux uh, compile a Linux kernel for it and push it, um, and it should work. Uh, it just there's I don't know what the mechanism to do that is, and yeah, so weird stuff. Um, so these dip switches are for different 
uh, settings in terms for the JAMA stuff so you you get a guide with it so it's called the classic arcade guide and if you look into it it, it has a lot of the connection details so uh, dip switches uh, for VGA it sets a VGA it, it uh, disables enables high score uh, flips the screen uh, normal mode or test mode for the system um, and then all a bunch more things that the dip switch can do this this is dip switch 3 there should be two more dip switches somewhere which I cannot find at all maybe those are for different things um, the JAMA uh, connector wire map and what you also get is um, uh, yeah the trackball connection for the joystick or trackball that you connect on to these pins Apart from that, uh, there is a bunch of games that are listed here. Uh, there are a bunch. Uh, so all the games with a star have are actually trackball games, and there's all sort of debug um, stuff. So, so you know, there's a known fact that any arcade per person um, running the arcade will make the games a bit difficult or change settings here and there so that people get more interested and buy the tokens over and over again so this all the settings at the back let you do everything from that uh, any way you want to customize all the game the amount of lives the amount of weird stuff uh, how much cost it how much how many coins and things like that so Everything's here. You can just put it into arcade case and play along with it. There are apparently thousands of videos how how to play on on, on an arcade with it. So, what I'm going to do as a last demo is power it on and show you guys it working, how it works. Yep, there we go. So, I think it takes five volts from the bus uh, power of USB. And now I can switch this off. Uh, move to the HDMI capture So you can see like that's the previous frame. So if I turn it on again, that should reset All right that reset and it's initializing so yeah the display is turned over because it's in uh, portrait mode uh, most of these are And I think that's just a percentage count. So let's wait for it to reach a hundred. And at that point, it will start showing some demos. and there you go so that's sort of it and it, it it if you leave it a moment it will actually start going into different demos but yeah um there's nothing more to it i don't have the controls i don't have the uh, appropriate connection so maybe at one point i'll buy the damn jama um connector and have a bunch of um things to play around with but for the time being you can see the pac-man demo started and just hung itself so it's not doing much right now um but yeah so that was sort of it i guess sadly um there's no there's very little scope of hacking at the moment so that, since i don't have anyone's contact um as to where might the schematics be where might um, the UART port be even if that was a thing I could have done something about it um, I just have the JTAG so I think I'll sometime when I get the chance I'll play around with that but apart from that um, yeah I guess uh, thank you so much for watching I hope you all have a nice day bye